Welcome my friends, this is Maniacal Incorporated. The court is abuzz with news of the impending war against Aquitaine. Now we can be quite impressed with uh, the influence that our family has in the royal court. It's only to be assumed, but quite often our court has been full of strangers. Here is our daughter and spymaster Skahak. Here is our daughter and antiquarian Mwirin. Here is our son and court physician, Patrick. There's Murdoch. So what I'm going to do is before we begin our war in Aquitaine, I have caught in Aragon. I've sent them an invite to war. Uh, we've began raising the forces. We are going to hold a court. I think it's been quite some time since we've had our last court, so we will see what the petitioners are asking for now. I recognize the first set of petitioners immediately. That's a lie. I had no idea who these people were. Uh, one of them is our cupbearer. The other is an artificer. Possibly the artificer who made the Irish spear. Uh, worryingly, they are not arguing with each other. So usually they are. They have an intense rivalry. My lord... I have to tell you that the people are intensely dissatisfied with your High Queen Marguerite. We fear that her recent behaviour is not becoming of a good and loyal High Queen Marguerite, and we demand that you do something about it. So we could either try and get them to look the other way, we could get one of them to turn on the other, uh, we could speak to the High Queen about their behaviour. So. When the last one was carrying on with him, that was fine. But this one now, you've, you've problems with her and I don't know what she's been doing. Perhaps you'd back those words up with steel. 95% success chance that we intimidate them. Both gain 20 opinion of me. And I gain 37 dread. They gain opinion because I terrify them. Because they're scared. I'd say our... Artificer especially, she knows how good a spear she made, so she knows that she shouldn't be messing with us. I wonder is there a graveyard throughout the two kingdoms that hasn't been dug up by somebody at this stage? What that lad didn't dig up, this lad dug up. So somebody comes to the throne telling us that our son, court physician Patrick, was caught red-handed, holding the dead away for his experiments. Uh, we'll go absolutely mad if we allow it. I did say we were going to start enforcing Brehan Law to the hilt. However, I think that this is clearly Crahour's favourite son. And I think that's why some of the decisions that have been made of recent have been made. And we'll be looking into that shortly. I think uh, Patrick is most certainly Crahour's favourite son. And not this lad who will inherit uh, the, as the, uh, the King of Ireland. So I think even though we have been quite intense with other people. We threw that lad in jail for the exact same thing. Patrick just cut it off. My lord, my knight Peter speaks up. I propose a cadastral survey of all the counties you own. Improve knowledge and mapping of your land will certainly increase its prosperity. I know he wants money. Uh, 265. Hell's bells. He's our seneschal. Maps are overrated. He'll lose 20 opinion with us. There must have been some carry on. Between, between these two. Because he gave us a rose. I think in, in one episode. Maybe he's becoming a bit too forward with us. Asking for 265 gold on the eve of a war. I'm afraid to say that maps are indeed overrated. As the last petitioner departs. Various courtiers follow them out of the room. Donning their armour. Their helmets. Getting their spears. And preparing to set sail for Aquitaine in our bid to install our friend and ally, Louis Mock Louis, 
as the new king. Now, of course, we had a big ball of money coming in from the Pope. I still think 265 was too much for a cadastral survey. I don't think the benefits would have would have justified uh, spending that much money. 79 years of age. How much more will we will we be getting from that man? I'd say I'd say it's coming to an end. Now we've also organized a marriage for our daughter Skahak, our spy master, and a, a high intrigue, random lowborn character with the Herculean trait. So we've decided to keep Skahak in our court and see if we can uh, begin to develop a high intrigue branch of our own family. It only makes sense that Krahur would begin to grow suspicious of trusting anyone else bar close members of his family with his uh, spycraft work. And there we go. Aragon has indeed decided to aid us in our war for Aquitaine. And we get a new martial lifestyle perk. The timing is a bit unfortunate. We're going to go for Never Back Down. Friendly Fatal Casualties minus 20. Advantage plus 5. I don't really care anymore about the Knights. I have a feeling this could be our last great war. But wait a minute. You've been promising a war for Scotland for the last couple of episodes. I have a feeling that when Krahur came to power and stabilized everything, he had three great goals. Stabilize Wales by attacking England. Uh, restoring a branch of the family, our in-laws, to power in Aquitaine. And once he had three sons, taking Scotland, ruling it himself, greatest high king of all time, king of Ireland, uh, Scotland and Wales, and then bestowing a kingdom onto each of his three sons uh, when he died. Mwiriduk is not as good a son or as talented a figure as we would have liked. He and Amlieb, of course, were off gallivanting with our spy masters. Only Patrick has shown talent. And I think definitely Patrick is becoming Krahur's uh, favoured son. The idea of taking Scotland has taken a back seat since Amlieb died in Syria. And it's entirely possible that Krahur is basically going to leave Scotland to uh, Patrick. I don't think he's encouraging him. I don't think he's telling him or putting ideas into his head. Uh, but I think he's pretty much hoping that Patrick will take Scotland and possibly even seize Ireland. I think he would prefer to see Patrick in power than Werduk. Uh, so our expedition to Aquitaine might very well be our last great war. After which... Krahur is going to begin going back down the learning lifestyle route. I was just coming up to check what was going on with our armies, and we are told that our sister Thufla has died of cancer. And Thufla, of course, was the wife of Louis, who we are trying to install as the new king of Aquitaine to replace I think it's his nephew we've had a strange relationship with poor old Tofla she's tried to set up numerous dance troops I think she messed up an artifact as well at one stage uh, 59 years of age and we now suffer a critical level of stress because of that so what we are seeing is we are bringing our forces down and um, Navarra has just entered the war. So what we're going to do is we're going to lend our forces in Navarra itself. We're going to send uh, the army with, if I am correct, if it has the mangonels. Uh, no, I think um, Aragon is going for the capital itself. I kind of wanted to go for the capital. 
maybe they were sieging that area independently. I'm going to leave these guys just planted here for a second. And of course, Brittany is causing tremendous amounts of, of trouble in the region. Brittany is at war with uh, Aragon, or not with Aragon, with um, uh, Aquitaine. So they're actually in this region. They're wandering around. But I think we'll, uh, we'll deal with the guys down here in Navarra first of all. Our Marshal, Master of the Horse, Ron Koo. He's a well of insight. He's trying to help us get up onto that next a Marshal Lifestyle perk. I actually don't know, do I even want four extra knights? Because we don't really have anyone of, of any good talent to, uh, to fill those positions. Uh, prepare the ranks. 56% chance of victory. And we succeeded. We've gained the trait further. Thanks for that, Ronku. And we're seeing some awkward news there in the corner. I don't know what uh, relation he is to us, but the Duke of De Hybert has been captured. So that's uh, that's awkward. He has left the prison and is still the Duke. That's that's not too bad at the very least. And we have indeed managed to seize something, the Viscaea Chronicon. Another book to make up for the last book that we didn't get a hold of. I'm wondering if I'll move them in here to finish off the siege. And what we'll need to do then is get these guys, who are under the command of the recently widowed Louis. We'll need to get them out. Uh, is there anywhere they can go? Let's send them up here for a second. If we take a look at what we have just seized. A truly epic chronicle of the glorious Viscaea family. And a plus 10 prestige or 0.1 prestige per month. A control territory defender advantage. Not sure if that's of much benefit to us. A clergy opinion. Uh, plus 0.1, plus 0.1, 0 0.04, and fertility. So the pressed orchid isn't all that much uh, good to us. We got this from our mother. So we're going to unequip that. And equip. Look at all these books we have. I think we are about to see the army that Louis is involved in. Uh, end up in a bit of a, ba a battle. We're going to leave that happen. Here is a prisoner that we just took, and I have recruited her to the court because she is a scholar. Uh, plus five learning. Uh, plus 22. So we might see if um, once this war ends, and here's a, a figure that we uh, ransomed out for a tenor. So when, when the war ends, we might find a position in court for her. They have indeed wandered in against the army led by Louis. I'm not too sure if he actually has. He has six knights. So this was an army that was retreating back in this direction. There's a good chunk of wars going on in this area at the moment. So it's a, a victory. I think they're probably hostile to us. I don't think they were actually even... Uh, they weren't even uh, even involved in the, in the actual war that's going on. We've finally gotten some war score. So Gilcrest, Peter... Uh, Prince Amlieb, you fool. I think it would have made more sense, and it's only now that I've realized this, when Amlieb was stripped of Kirken, if I had given that to our son Patrick instead. That would have made more sense. Fintan, he hates me. Uh, Goitna down in Munster, I've stopped trying to sway him because he's left the uh, the independence faction, and Dovkane. So fairly solid numbers there by them. I don't think anybody came off injured. Nope. Oh, maybe we should have taken that learning lifestyle decision earlier because I would have been going down the uh, improving the High King's health. I knew that getting older would mean doing everything slower, but I didn't think it would all come to a halt until my death. Lately, I feel a constant malaise. And everything takes more effort than before. I'm worried that if I lie down, I might not be able to get up again. There is no doubt that my time is running out. I feel like I can do naught but to await death's sweet embrace to claim me. So we have become infirm. 
a severe health penalty, dread loss, plus 100%. Minus 3 to everything, minus 6 prowess. Definitely at this stage, we're going to abandon continuing down the, uh, the military route. There's no point. I really thought we were going to have a couple more fights with the High King, but it does not look like it. His... Mental and physical health has not been well since Amlib's death on the crusade. Maybe he feels guilty, maybe he feels it was indeed a punishment from God for his execution of Bridget. It's probably the only decision that he has made that he has questioned. A severe health penalty. And we're caught into another, into a defensive war, I believe. Um, absolutely, so we're trying to install Louis MacLouis on the throne of Aquitaine. His son, Louis MacLouis MacLouis, is married to the Duchess of Austria. That's an alliance that we will, well, that we'd like to keep going, so we will accept that. Seems though we're down here, uh, down this part of the world. This is our daughter, Mwerin, has had a child with Gilchrist Loden. So Mwerin is also staying in our court. Gilchrist is in one of the armies. I think we uh, we saw his stats there a couple of seconds ago. Mugron. Good Irish name. Let's see what, what else we can get. What's well, a son? I thought it was a daughter for some strange reason. I was wondering, I was thinking Mugron is a strange name for a, for a daughter. Mug would be um, something to do. I don't know, is it Mug or Moo? Because most times the G doesn't get mentioned. So... Or uh, doesn't get pronounced. So Mug would be... You see it in, in Mug Nuada, um, Which is like... The slave of Nuada, And Oka Mug Madoin or Oka Mu Madoin. Uh, Oka the slave lord. So it has something to do with that. Uh, Kasrach. Sure. Strong, wise. Etc. Let me see how sick this man is. He's melancholic and infirm. So his health is poor. Yeah. A small health boost from a medicine focus, and we will go down this direction. Uh, somebody is arriving. In down Patrick. Well, Brazil. Does he even have any money left? We gave your father land, made him put on some clothes. And now he's coming to pay homage to us, but he doesn't have anything to show us. Show him in at once. Uh, he kneels in deference, offering nothing but his oath to faithfully continue wearing clothes. Serve me well. Well, Brazil, serve me well. The King of Sweden has become involved somewhere. Uh, we're going to finish one of our sieges down here. I think we might very well stay to the south. I know that um, Aquitaine had been sieged down there recently. Or not Aquitaine, but the capital. It looks like their war with... Brittany has come to an end, so we are going to send in the... The Mangonels. We're going to hit the capital. It's going to come under siege again for the second time. I'm wondering where we will send the... I think we'll send them across the river. Park them here. And uh, help to defend that crossing, just in case they try to send down anything from that direction. What's been going on up here in Scotland with the last while? We've been getting pop-ups that members of the family are being imprisoned. Ranald the former king and nephew of the current king, uh, with about 1,600 soldiers, no alliances, has tried to take on his uncle, who had an alliance with Sweden. So that was a bad idea. That alliance does seem to have fallen apart, though. So Scotland is weakened. As is the High King. Uh, mentally and physically. So I, I still don't think even this change of affairs uh, has 
uh, changed the High King's mind. Indeed, it's more likely that if the Swedish alliance still existed, that he would have taken on Scotland as a challenge. But now, I think his melancholy is uh, kicking into overdrive, but uh, Scotland anyways is, is up in up in arms and up in chaos, as always. We find our son Patrick no longer able to dig up and cut up dead bodies. He's taken to reading, and he has found a troubling translation of a medical textbook. A 300 lifestyle learning experience. I would absolutely love to get this. It would also increase Patrick's learning by two. We help him to translate the text. The problem is that we're zealous. I'm wondering if Krahur has started wandering towards cynicism in his old age. I'm not actually too pushed about the uh, the 300 learning. That plus two for for Patrick would be fantastic. I think it's most likely that we would we would use our vast sources of uh, wealth. Yeah, like I said, he's our favorite son, so we're not going to tell him uh, you should look to the scriptures um, and disappoint him. I think we would we would give Patrick whatever he wants, so we will buy him a better translation. We'll get 50 uh, learning lifestyle. It's not that full 300, and it doesn't give him the plus two. In fairness, uh, if he goes down the learning lifestyle path, he isn't going to need that plus two because he's going to pick it up through uh, through other skills. Our court grandeur continues to hover around, and there we go, 4,700. I have no idea whose army that is, but they're off in some direction. We had best try and bring this war in Aquitaine to an end as quickly as possible, because we are beginning to see more wars breaking out in Austria. We will accept... I remember when I said we weren't going to be fighting any more wars. We saw there at the start of the episode that our daughter, Skahach, our spy master, was married off to a high intrigue, dishonorable lackey. They have had a son. Flohus or Flochus. Let's see what else there is. Trenka, Trenka. Strong, wise, so on and so forth. The Divils, they have, they've skirted around that uh, river and they've headed south. They're going to try and lift some sieges. I think we'll just siege down the capital. The best thing we could do is to send down our secondary army. Do you know what? The siege will be over in a second. It's fine. Our court artificer has died. We have a lot of court positions to, uh, to fill later on. That is the main Aquitaine army. I think we will we will direct the forces down in this direction. I'm sure Aragon will probably rise up as well. And if we could actually hit them. We're going in in a kind of a pincer formation. I'd say we'll probably miss the main Aquitaine army. We did not. It is Amlieb commanding the overwhelming Irish forces as they smash into the armies led by Polpest, the usurper. Uh, Prince Patrick, Mock Crahur of Ireland, something, something. I wasn't sure about that. Uh, I didn't actually get time to see that. He's either injured or been injured. Uh, my recent endeavors within the realm of theology have given me a greater appreciation of God's representatives on earth. Trying to express some of these feelings, I will draft a letter to the King Bishop, Sylvester. I sit down with my daughter, Mwerin, and together we craft a truly splendid letter. But he's not happy because we gave him the wrong title. Now, forgiving nature, or his only superior, um, God, he's zealous. Yeah, his only, his only superior. Uh, or we could gain 50 lifestyle experience. How are we doing for piety? We are, I don't think we're going to hit religious icon. We keep spending piety asking the Pope for money. His only superior, God. 
that war has ended. We will enforce our demands and we will see our brother-in-law installed as the king of Aquitaine. Unfortunately, we will not see our sister Tofla installed as queen because, of course, she passed away just after seeing off the fleets, seeing off her husband. Uh, he had crossed, they had just passed uh, Cornwall when she passed away, so surely the armies would have arrived, begun sieging Navarra, and then received the news of her death. And look at him there, we are told that King Louis IV of Aquitaine is no longer our high alimoner. And there is his son and heir, Prince Louis of Aquitaine, who will also, at some stage, so their grandson, or the grandson of the, the current king, will most likely become, well, I was going to say the Duke of Austria. We have, we have a bit of work to do to make sure that that actually happens. It was a fairly hefty battle. We got... Uh, massive amounts of forces in there in the end. Nat Freuk. There's Amlieb. Do you know what? We keep giving out about him. He's not He's not doing the worst. Our son-in-law, uh, Gilchrist. There's Peter. Still leading his son, for real. Uh, Gorton is there. Patrick's not doing too shabby at all at all. And uh, considering that he's not injured, he must indeed have taken on Paul, the usurper. And uh, wounded him. Uh, Finton has been wounded, uh, Ron Koo has been wounded, and we can see then that Finton was wounded in killing an enemy knight. And uh, Peter, not alone, like I said, staying in ahead of his son, but also managed to kill an enemy knight, and then a count uh, was killed by one of our allies. That there looks like a very Spanish name, so I presume that is... Uh, somebody a vassal of the Queen of Aragon. Our glory is widely known as we begin a cannonball run. That will take us through, what, four? It's going to take us through uh, two kingdoms, three kingdoms, two kingdoms, an empire, and then into Austria. Uh, Mwiren and Gilchrist have had a daughter. This will tell you how long we've been away from home, considering how many members of the family have been born. Martha. Martha. Why did you say that name? May you grow to be strong and wise. We're beginning to see some signs of the longevity of the High King's rule. He is being asked to form alliances for his grandchildren. I'm not too sure Amlieb had any grandchildren reach adulthood while he was alive. And of course the High King, Krahur, is 58 years of age, so he is the uh, the eldest High King that we've had in a while. This is you, though you don't always feel like yourself. So here's his granddaughter, uh, Patrick's daughter. And here is the Duke of Holland, which is just across the way from England, nice and close by. If Patrick was to maybe think about waging any wars that he needed alliances for. So I think this is very much, again, Krahur showing his favoritism. And of course, another reason why Krahur is showing such favoritism is because, so far, uh, his son and heir, Murduk, has only had one child, his daughter, Nula, our granddaughter, who is currently in line to become Queen of Ireland. Now, we could try and arrange a matrilineal marriage. But like I said, I think Rahur is kicking the can down the line and letting the next generation sort things out. And he's going to form an alliance for her with a duke in the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, currently actually fighting in a war for Lower Bosnia. He's defending somebody there. So maybe this is how 
the family has come to know of him. Uh, true involvement with... Uh, I don't think any of our family is actually involved in this war, but he's showing support in that region. So we will send that proposal. His armies, again, are not uh, up to the same calibre as that alliance that we have formed for Onya. There you go. We're actually being called to Bosnia. Uh, to the thoughtful High King Rahur of Ireland, I call on you to honour our alliance and join me in the war for Count Kesimir's claim on the Duchy of Lower Bosnia. And so I was ever so slightly incorrect, this guy, as well as a duchy within the Holy Roman Empire, he does indeed have the Duchy of Lower Bosnia. And uh, quite rightly has called us into this war, which we will accept. It would be rude not to. And we are being told that somebody is plotting to kill our dear friend Peter. Now that is a bit worrying. We will see what um, what that looks like. It's not looking the worst at the moment. And we have finally suffered some form of a mental break. Uh, either we have 104 out of 300, so maybe we haven't been able to um, to get this down over the last couple of years. And again, we are angry. We have the irritable trait. It will lose 14 stress. Yeah, we're just going to uh, to give out to this lad. It's entirely possible that if we send this guy, he will have returned home before us. We have a lot of money. The only problem is that we have a lot of land to cover. It's only 50 quid. Only 50 quid. Go on. Go on. Let's see what we find. We're not going to get to go to Bosnia. So be it. Our grandson-in-law has already lost uh, a region. We've gotten a few pop-ups. Our beneficiary is heading away off. Uh, we have too much in the realms of tapestries and artwork. We have too much in the realms of trinkets. If he could get us a skull, that is indeed something that we have room for in the court. So go off and look for some type of a skull. Damn. Those 95 troops disappeared. So we continue our march off in this direction. Uh, who's after dying? The Duke of Upper Lorraine. What is the what is the scenario here now? Who's after inheriting? Uh, this guy... I'm not too sure who we did and didn't have an alliance to, but I think our alliance to Upper Lorraine is still in place, because there's Patrick. So Patrick will... The, the alliance is probably gone, but uh, Patrick, of course, will be able to reform that at some stage. Maybe get another 6,000 troops. Uh, we have lost some fame because of our dishonor. I don't know what... Uh... Okay. Hmm. We have an independence faction brewing as we make our way slowly, slowly across Europe. Uh, we had gotten this guy down to minus four at one stage. Goitna is being a devil again. What is he angry about? He wants a seat in the council. There's a couple of people who want seats in the council. The problem is that they are all, by and large, useless. Now, you're a 19 steward. If we were to give you a seat in the council, it would get rid of that minus 40. So, our steward, at the moment, is a fantastic uh, 24... But, uh, yeah, I think we will have to appoint our nephew. Oh, he's angry with us because we fought him. What's he like in terms of troops? 1,000, yeah. Sorry for baiting you up that time. I've started a scheme to sway him as well. I just wanted to show off the, uh, the development because this is all that I have had my uh, stewards doing with the last while. So, obviously... Uh, 22 development up here in Ulla itself. That's where we've been concentrating mostly. Uh, down around Munster isn't great. Nines and tens. But in the 867 start, 
Desmond and Dublin, which is under Norse control, are a four. Everywhere else on Ireland is a two or a three. So we've uh, we've done a good chunk of development up here in Ola. It's brought us up in line with some places here in the north of France. Uh, there's a couple of very good places here in the south of Spain. Okay, we're not we're not exactly in a position to contend with uh, with Italy, but we're not doing too shabby uh, overall. Ulster is indeed a great seat of learning and knowledge. What a bad omen this is. I think this is one of the first pop-ups that we had when Crahur became High King because I thought we were hiring mercenaries, but we were just buying glasses. Uh, we could tell Kuken that we need his assistance and give him a weak hook on us. Uh, we could buy one of these looking stones, spend 125 gold at 59 years of age. Having read Dune, having read the six books that Frank Herbert wrote, probably having bought all of Brian Herbert's stuff as well. We've maybe looked at some of it and we're like, ugh. Sell everything, which is impossible to read. It was May of this year that we set out to uh, arrive in Austria. We set out for Austria in May. It's now December. We've gotten that lifestyle learning perk. We will wash our hands. Uh, Iron Constitution is going to be the next one. So we're plowing through them fairly quickly. We don't really need to, to get 300 lifestyle learning here and there. We're, we're plowing through them. We've uh, 43 per month. We missed that main army that we were uh, heading for. And this was, of course, the army that was under the command of Louis. Uh, who would it make sense to, uh, to put in charge here? Do you know what? Go on. So our massive 3k army has slammed into 50 men. We are... What could we start doing? I suppose one thing that we could start doing is just uh, simply send them down here and siege. Because the more sieges we can do... The more things that we can... The more money we can make. I'm sure that's all we want in life. Two hostile armies have managed to hit each other. Including one of the armies that's at war. Uh, with Austria. So that's kind of handy. That gives the High King's army time to catch up. There it is. The 2818. I don't think we've managed to hit them. And maybe lifting... No, they've, uh, they've stopped, so yeah, we'll, we'll continue on the way up. I was going to say maybe hitting these guys would be a better idea. Uh, defending in mountains. Oh, yes, no, that's that's maybe not the best. That's maybe not the best. The mountains of Croatia were problematic enough for us. We're not going to go taking on the mountains in uh, Central Europe. We'll see how our knights did. Pope Sylvester the Fourth has died of old age. Ah well. Be still, my beating heart. What a handsome pope this is. Marinus the Third, long life and lots of money to you. We are in a position to ask the new pope for money. But I think what we will do is we will hold off on that. And uh, we'll hold off on that and try and keep our piety up. I don't want to send this army in too far and lose too many, too many troops through attrition and whatnot. Uh, 397 men are coming in against 3,400. That wasn't a great idea. So this was the army that had gotten hit by the uh, Krems and got um, got pushed back. Uh, where are these guys going? So Austria is coming down to us. They're all, I think they're all just running. I think they're all running for it. I think it's another problem of getting them into the mountains, which would be putting us in a bad position. It is indeed. We should have just continued sieging. But uh, we're going to have one of the battles done, or one of the sieges done here in a moment. 
and I think just having our forces in this region, marching them around, I don't think there's going to be a lot that, uh, that people are going to be able to do. Not alone are they fighting us, but they're fighting each other as well. Uh, that second battle, again, not a, not a huge lot going on. So there's Patrick uh, observing the siege. So we have captured some place. We've taken some people prisoner. There's actually another place to siege down. Fantastic. That's mighty. So these two are frightening each other. And they're frightening each other, and they're um, they're frightened of us. Uh, Austria sending out its 395 troops. Uh, Scotland is back speaking Goidelic. It had indeed stopped for a while. That's right, I can't remember what they had picked up, but he has now started to speak Goidelic. Our beneficiary, our adventurer, is having some problems. Uh, 53 success, 46 success. Or we lose one progress. I think we'll just lose the progress. I don't think, I don't think we're too pushed. Uh, Austria's gone away off in some direction. I have no idea where it's going. Uh, we're trying to avoid suffering too much attrition. Uh, Austria's army is going to get hit. Austria's made some bad choices in its life. Austria's made some bad choices. My fear would be if, if something like the... Um, the king is in there, or not the king, but the, the Duchess. I doubt the Duchess of Austria would be in there. We might be able to hit these guys. No. Stand and fight, you cowards! I can't remember when the last time was that we saw the High King... Uh, commanding an army, I was about to say that uh, we mightn't see it today, but we will indeed. We have gone in against an army that we've, uh, I think it's Linz, we're actually making um, good success over them, commanded by the High King and six of his knights. Uh, we've won a siege, we have 100% war score in that battle, and Skahuk has had two children in this episode, as has her sister. If only your brother... Muraduk had some sons. Arth Bren. Strong wise. There you go, a victory, a battle commanded by the High King Gilchrist, our son in law. His brother Amlieb, he's, uh, he's keeping Peter close to him. He's keeping that devil close to him as well. Uh, we've won a siege down in this area. I suppose what we will need to do is bring these guys in and start sieging here. I don't know if we could send the High King in from the position that he is in to attack this army. We could. They do have a better army commander. And the High King is actually one of the, uh, the best commanders that we have. Amlieb, is Amlieb commanding this army? Do you know what we'll do? Select new commander. Remove Commander. There's no going home for you yet. We will put the High King in command. And Amli will command the army that he's actually in. And that does indeed change matters. Um, so we've won that battle against Linz. So be it. Oh, and it could be a disaster. They might actually get some troops out first. They didn't, which would have been fantastic. We would have been fighting a, a smaller, a lesser army. It's a good thing we did indeed change the High King. Uh, to remove him, Peter has killed a mayor of Wikipedia. Our glory is widely known. A hefty battle yet again. Goitna is slowly but surely growing to admire us, possibly for our military prowess and our skills in command, giving up command of the army. To the much more suitable Amlieb. We do give out about him. We do complain. 20 prowess. 18 martial. Skill tactician. Flexible leader. Strategist. Crusader. Poet. In fairness he is one of the greatest military figures that we have ever seen. One of the great military commanders. Of course executed. Muelmura. Who harboured. 
Kyluk Finin. That, uh, that murdered our uncle. There he is, Amlieb. Uh, Peter, 57, killing a mayor. So uh, a tremendous battle. Uh, we're told that we have something in the court with a while. High Kingophile. A new face is wandering around my throne room. Occasionally giggling and jumping up and down on the spot when he glances upon some artwork representing Irish ways. There is something off about this visitor. And when he comes forth, it is evident he is carrying a replica of my favourite spear. This isn't the, uh, the movie that Nicolas Cage is in at the moment, is it? I cannot help but genuflect before you I have devoted my life in Geldron. To appreciating the culture of Irish. I only speak in Goidelic. Eat Irish roast swan. Ah yes, we are famous for our Irish roast swan. And have studied the blade in the Irish fashion. My family have banned me from our house. Claiming if I cannot do anything but obsess over Kingdom of Ireland. I should live there instead. This is flattering, if somewhat violating. And that's 100 Diplomacy Lifestyle. Someone so enthusiastic should join our court. We will lose three court grandeur. How dare you copy my spear. Take it off him. 12 Marshal. There's nothing great about him. Um, what's the least problematic option? I don't want to spend... We're going to spend prestige anyway. So yeah, it looks like we're going to give out to this man. Silly fool. How dare you copy my spear. I didn't realize, but that Liberty Faction is actually in a position to fire at any point in time. They do have substantial uh, numbers of... Uh, or uh, substantial army. We're making good headway. Swaying our nephew, but... Uh, we haven't gotten him to drop out of the Independence Faction just yet. Mwiriduk! is plotting to kill Peter, the cloistered fiend. Yeah, cloistered. We've taken more prisoners. We're gonna bring the army with the High King in command of the Siege Weaponry. We're, weaponry. We're gonna bring it across here. Not much that needs to be done anymore. I don't even know where that force has gone to. We might send these guys over to deal with uh, this little army. We wouldn't want to let them gain another region. Uh, but we're actually already making fairly good headway here with this siege. I'm not too sure how this happened, but we have somehow managed to take a vassal or a courtier of the King of Aquitaine prisoner in that last siege. Do you know what? He owes us 20 quid. It looks like they are doing a runner into the mountains. Well, we've hit them. So the Battle of Hallstatt. Uh, it doesn't look like Austria is actually doing any good trying to end that siege if I'm... That's not even Austria. We are motoring through these lifestyle learning perks. Iron Constitution. It is going to increase our fertility. That's exactly what we want. So we're fine. Uh, medicine focus. Iron constitution. Pastoralists. We are melancholic and infirm, however. Our prowess has now dropped to 12. I can't imagine that's going to be uh, improving anytime soon. Hopefully, if we can finish this siege, it will bring this war to an end. Uh, we could do with bringing this war to an end. Nothing massive. Same old, same old. Peter, Gilchrist, Goitna, Dufkane. Uh, 549 troops. Not a huge heap they can do. And there we are, 100% war score. A hundred. A hundred. There we go. Have we won the war? 
And how long have we been here? Was it 1193 we set off in this direction? Was it, was it three years? About two years. December. Uh, 63, I think, when we landed here. That would make sense. The High King is 61 years of age. Dear God. We have returned from the furthest corners of Europe. And hopefully the next time that Austria needs help, the Duchess will call her father-in-law the King of Aquitaine, instead of bothering us. Uh, now that we are no longer in command of the army, we have a lot of options across the top. We're also told that we are above our domain limit, and one of our options is to found a holy order. At this stage of the game, really, it's a waste of money, and it will achieve uh, fairly little. However, I think it is... An attempt by Krahur to cement his position and his reputation and his fame by creating a holy order. Of course, we can also uh, get a good chunk of money from it. Increase the fervor of Catholicism and also to honor his son Amlieb. Uh, we should have the piety. I don't think it's going to knock us in any direction. We're the same level of devotion as our father and the same level of prestige. I think it's going to be tough to get to Living Legend, but he might well, potentially, make it to Paragon of Virtue. And I think that's really what Krahur is thinking about at this stage. Uh, here is the barony that he's father built, and we will hand it over to a holy order in Amlieb's name. So not exactly on par with the Knights Templar, but we have created what is only the second Catholic holy order, the Knights Hospitaller, uh, basically the Order of Malta, to honour both Amlieb and, no doubt, Pope Sylvester, a good and dear friend of Ireland, who passed away uh, only recently. Hopefully the new Pope might think about taking the emergence of a second uh, holy order as a sign to call a crusade. Thank you for joining me on this episode, and I hope you will join me on the next one. As Krahur continues to contemplate what must surely be the final years of his life.